Let's talk about pumpkins. To begin with, I suspect some of you are wondering why I've carved seven pumpkins with exactly the same face. Others of you may be wondering why I'm wearing this very stylish lab coat. The answer to both of those questions is that today we're performing an experiment. As I said in the cold open, we're performing an experiment today. And by today, I mean today when you're watching this. The actual experiment for me will take place over presumably a week or two. I don't exactly know how long it will take, and I'll explain that in a moment. The experiment has to do with something that I've been wondering about for quite a while, and that is how can we make our jack-o'-lanterns last longer? Usually I carve them the night before Halloween or sometimes the morning of Halloween because I want them to be in great condition on the big night itself, and then they don't last very long after. But I've read around the internet about many different methods that people have used to preserve them and make them last just a little bit longer, and I thought I would test those methods out and see which ones work, and in fact, which ones work better than others, and that's the reason for the seven pumpkins. Let me begin by explaining this is about preserving carved jack-o'-lanterns, not uncarved pumpkins. Uncarved pumpkins last quite a while as long as they're kept in a reasonable climate and not carved. But once they're carved, as we all know, their faces start wilting rapidly. They're only good for maybe a couple of days, depending on your climate. Well, I want to see whether these methods, these various methods that I've read about, can actually make them last longer. And there are many different possible methods to choose from. I've read about dozens. For the purpose of this video, I've chosen a few methods, and I've carved up identical-ish pumpkins. I used the same pattern for the faces, so they're as identical as I could get them. Obviously, some of them are slightly larger than others, some of them are slightly different shapes than others. They did all come from the same place at the same time, so presumably these are all from the same harvest, so hopefully that lends some credibility to my experiment. And I should make it abundantly clear, this is not a thoroughly controlled, properly scientific experiment. I am trained in science. I would love to do that kind of experiment. Unfortunately, I just don't have the means to test dozens and dozens or even hundreds of pumpkins under different environmental conditions and keeping everything else constant and doing all of the kinds of things we would need to do for a proper scientific study. What is within my means is a little informal sort of Mythbusters style study where I'm testing the stuff out to the best of my ability given the means that I have. And so I've carved them identically, I've carved them all at the same time, and in fact here on day zero, I carved these just today, I've already given them their first treatment. I gave them their treatments immediately upon finishing carving each one. So technically, these are separated by a couple of hours in their carving time and treatment time, but that's just as close as I could get it. I will also point out that your mileage will vary in terms of success with these kinds of preserving methods, because we all live in different climates, we have different temperatures, whether you're in a hotter climate or a colder climate, more or less prone to critters getting in, or all kinds of different environmental concerns will affect how long your pumpkins will last. I'm assuming that, though I can't tell you exactly how long your pumpkin will last in your climate, I think the results of this experiment in terms of which preservation technique is better than the other, I think that'll hold true for everybody because these are all being treated to identical conditions to each other. I'm keeping them all together. I'm not going to have some inside and some outside. They're all going to be experiencing the same temperature and humidity and other environmental conditions. So hopefully we'll get some good results. So there are some different ideas behind the various 
preservation techniques that I've chosen. I've chosen ones that are easy to do and that I've read about on multiple sources around the internet. The first method, which I've applied to this first pumpkin, this guy right here up front, is bleach. Now there are a couple of ways of bleaching pumpkins. One method is to actually soak pumpkins in bleach for quite a while, give them a bleach bath before carving them. That's not what I've done. What I've done what I've done instead is to prepare this spray bottle with bleach. This is three tablespoons of bleach, pure bleach, mixed with just regular tap water in this spray bottle. As soon as I finished carving this, I sprayed down the entire inside and all of the carved surfaces. I will be doing that once per day until I've decided that this pumpkin has sufficiently rotted and I take it out of the experiment. The second pumpkin, and that's this one here, number two, will be treated with a peppermint castile soap solution. That's this solution here in the same kind of spray bottle. Again, I took three tablespoons of the soap and then filled up the rest of the bottle with ordinary tap water. And like I did with the bleach, I sprayed down the entire interior and all of the carved surfaces. And again, I will be doing that once per day. In fact, I'll be reapplying all of these remedies once per day, so that will be consistent. The idea behind both the bleach and this peppermint soap is that bleach, of course, and in fact peppermint, have certain antiseptic qualities. And what causes pumpkins to rot, and what causes their faces to wilt as they rot, is that bacteria, fungi, and other organisms feast upon the, the pumpkin, and that's what causes the rot. Applying the bleach or the peppermint should kill off and not allow some of these organisms, these microorganisms, to grow on the pumpkin's vulnerable carved surfaces. So that's the idea. The third pumpkin, this guy over here, has been treated with this petroleum jelly. Once again, I rubbed down all of the carved surfaces and the entire interior of the pumpkin with a thin layer of petroleum jelly. The idea with this one is similar but different to the other two. Rather than killing the microorganisms, the idea here is that it provides a protective film and keeps the organisms from being able to get onto the pumpkin. A slightly different idea, which I have performed on this pumpkin number four, instead of treating it with a substance, was a different carving method. Instead of carving off the top, like I have on these, and making a lid, I've carved off the backside of the pumpkin. The idea here is that by leaving the stem intact and attached to the body of the pumpkin, there's still some nutrient flow from the stem into the pumpkin, and presumably that allows it to last a little bit longer. That also can be useful, in addition to the preservative technique, in providing a larger opening so that you can get out all of the guts and perform different kinds of carvings. Some people even carve a negative image on one side and a positive image on the other so that you have a pumpkin face and a projection onto the wall behind it. So there's all these different carving techniques, but all I'm interested in for now is whether this makes it last any longer. For pumpkin number five, this one right here, I've chosen a commercially available pumpkin preservative, and that is this spray bottle, or these spray bottles, under the brand name of Pumpkin Fresh. Looking at the ingredients, I see these contain distilled water, sodium tetraborate decahydrate, and sodium benzoate. So this is not a home remedy, this is commercially available. Not terribly expensive, although it is more expensive than the other home preparations that I've come up with. So we'll see how the commercially available products compare to the sort of over-the-counter, let's say, or I guess home remedies or home preservation techniques. And then pumpkin number six over here has received all of the above treatments. My curiosity here is to find out whether these different methods of preservation work at cross purposes and handicap each other, or whether they work sort of collaboratively and the different substances provide different levels of protection against different kinds of microbes and maybe the one that's received all of these treatments will perform better than the others. So we'll find that out with pumpkin number six. And finally we have pumpkin number seven, this guy right here in the middle, and that's my control. This guy I've carved normally and applied none of these treatments. 
The lid I cut off the top like I normally do. I carved the same face and I have not applied any of the sprays or the petroleum jelly. So this will represent normal time of decay and then we'll see if the others manage to last any longer. First, then this control one, and then if any ones in particular last longer than the others. So obviously, this is all going to take quite a while. An ordinary pumpkin usually lasts at least a few days. This is a couple days before Halloween of 2022. You're going to be seeing this around Halloween or in advance of Halloween 2023 because my idea was I wanted these to be among my Halloween pumpkins this year, so this is just right before Halloween, these will be out on Halloween. Over the course of the next few days, including Halloween and the days after, I will be reapplying the treatments to all of the pumpkins, except for the control, and I'll be tracking their progress. I'll be taking either video or photographs and making notes as to their progress. At the end, we'll come back, we'll discuss the results, and I will provide whatever recommendations I've been able to come up with based on the results of this study. You know, it seems to me that more people ought to do science surrounding horror and Halloween. Hopefully this starts a trend and we see all kinds of Halloween or horror-based scientific experiments here on YouTube in the future. Even if not, I enjoy this sort of thing, so I'll probably do something of the sort again in the future. Do make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on it. And while you're at it, also leave me a comment in case I've missed any of your favorite pumpkin-preserving techniques. The comment section can be sort of an open forum on what's worked for different people in different circumstances. But I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off for now. You will see me again as I check in throughout the experiment, and then you'll see me one final time as I discuss the final results several days or weeks into the future. So with all of that said, let's get to the experiment. And here we see day two. It is Halloween day. I've moved them all outside and I've put them in order. So number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're in order so I can easily keep track of what's what. They're all still looking pretty good. Number one, two, three, four there, five, six, and seven. All still holding up pretty well, as is the one that I carved of Ark the Clown for this year. But the experiment continues. I'm now going to reapply all of my various substances to the ones that get substances. So stay tuned and we'll see how they go. For the reapplication, I'm starting here with number one, which is the bleach. I'm going to begin by just applying a generous spritz to the front, like so. Then I'm going to take the lid off and we'll do around the edge here. A little bit down on the inside just to make sure it's well protected and of course a little bit on the lid and we'll put that back same thing with number two starting just on the outside this is the peppermint soap and a little bit on the lid a little bit on the inside and around the edge number three gets the petroleum jelly so we're just gonna take some with a uh, cotton swab and just around all the holes. This is going to take a while so I'm going to do the rest of these off camera but I'm giving all of them the same treatment. Number four of course doesn't get a treatment it's got the hole in the back. Number five got the commercial spray so I'll spray it with that commercial spray. Number six got everything so it'll get the petroleum jelly and the everything spray which has two tablespoons of each of the bleach the commercially available and the soap. And number seven on the end is the control. It's not getting anything. So I will finish treating all of these and we'll check back tomorrow. So the reason I look different now than in the introduction to this video is that I'm filming this at the end of the experiment. The results are in and I'm going to walk you through everything sort of day by day. So from now on, after what you've just seen, instead of taking video for the rest of the days, I've taken still photos and I'm arranging them on this grid pattern as you see now, so you can see exactly what happened to each pumpkin over the course of the entire experiment. My comments throughout these remaining days will be fairly brief, but if you want to examine the photographs in more detail, please 
feel free to pause this video whenever you want and take a look at each one in as much detail as you want. So here we see day three, and honestly, there's not very much change yet. Even untreated, pumpkins ought to last three days, so I didn't expect to see a change. There's some discoloration you might notice on number one, but that's just the texture of that particular pumpkin. You can see some of the petroleum jelly globs on the edges of number three, and number four is just barely starting to shrink up, but nothing too bad. Five still looks good. Six might just be starting to shrink up a little bit, but it's hard to tell at this stage. And the control, number seven, seems pretty good as well. By day four, I notice all of them have the teeth just starting to shrink up and turn inward a little bit. Number four is actually not faring too well. It seems to be aging fairly rapidly. And same goes for number six. Since those were the two that had the hole cut out of the back instead of the top, things aren't looking too great for that particular method. So far, those are actually faring worse than the control, number seven. Here we see them on day five, pretty much more of the same. We also notice that some snow has started falling, so that may affect how they go from here on. Number four is still aging rapidly, and it looks like a critter found his nose. And the same thing happened to the control. It looks like some squirrels may have gotten to number seven. That's actually something to be aware of as you prepare these various preservation techniques. Some of them may repel critters better than others. But if you're a nature lover, you should also be aware that some of them may be toxic to wildlife, so you should be careful where you put them. But I also found throughout this experiment that it wasn't as much of a concern because the critters seemed to only nibble on the ones that hadn't been treated with anything toxic. Here on day six, we see, well, more of the same, perhaps just incremental changes on each of them. But I'm prepared at this point to call numbers four and seven fairly well out of the game at this point. They're not completely gone, but they haven't really held on particularly well. The only major change here on day seven was that number six fell over. It's one of the ones that had the hole cut out in the back instead of the top, and it seems like as that hole started to shrivel, it just lost some of its stability and eventually toppled over. But as long as you could prop it against something, I think it could still be in the game. On day eight, we're seeing some more shriveling. Numbers one and two seem to be holding up overall, but losing their teeth. Number three seems to be in good shape. Four is completely gone by this point, though we'll keep seeing its progress as we go. Five seems to be on pace with numbers one and two. Six is holding up well, but starting to collapse under its weight a bit. And seven seems about the same as before, but with some more chewed bits. Day nine is about the same, except the combination of decay and critters has lost number seven its top, which fell inside the pumpkin. Day 10, number seven is just getting worse and worse, and number six is looking dangerously close to being finished, but otherwise just more incremental decay from most of them. At this point, I have to say number three is looking the best so far. By day 11, number two is still in the game, but starting to look fairly shriveled, and five is starting to look maybe a bit more shriveled than some of the others. Day 12, I'd say more of the same. We're also starting to see some mold growing on their insides, which you can see most clearly on number seven, because, well, it's the most decayed and provides the easiest vision of the inside. Here's day 13, and I think, though its face is still clear, I'm ready to call number two. It held up pretty well, and if you needed, you could get some more days out of it, but it's shriveled beyond what the face originally looked like at this point. And number seven, at this point, seems to be collapsing in on itself. On day 14, it's pretty much more of the same. Number six has lost its face completely by now. Of the ones that are still in the race, numbers one and five seem to be the worst off, but they're still holding out. And honestly, keeping them alive for two weeks at this point is certainly something to admire. These preservatives have absolutely extended the life of the pumpkins beyond what we would normally expect. Here's day 15, and notice that though all of them are showing some signs of age by this point, 
some of the faces are still clearly recognizable. Day 16, and it's still too close to call between numbers 1, 3, and 5. They're all decaying in different ways, so it's hard to compare one to the other. And here's day 17, still plugging along. I honestly didn't really expect the experiment to last quite this long, and I think the neighbors were starting to wonder what I was up to by this point. Day 18. Number 5 is looking perhaps a little worse for the wear, but still in the fight. Day 19. Aside from some snow, they're looking pretty similar. Day 20. Some accelerated decay, perhaps, but no major changes. This was the part of the experiment where I really felt like I was sort of in a holding pattern, just waiting for something to happen. By day 21, numbers 1 and 5, though in slightly different ways, are both looking like they're ready to give it up. But I said the same a week before, so they might still last a while. Meanwhile, number 3 is still holding out remarkably well. And just to speed things along a little bit, here's day number 22, and day number 23, and here on day 24, the lid collapsed on number 1, so I'm ready to finally call that one. It also had a fair amount of mold on the inside by this point. Number 5 is almost as bad, but because the lid held on just that little bit better, I think we're going to say maybe that they're tied, but we could also say that number 1 failed just a smidge before or just a smidge worse than number 5 did. Number 3 is also starting to look a bit worse for the wear, but still looking the best of the bunch. Day 25 here, not much changed. Day 26, we see some fluid or liquid is starting to drain from number 3. I'm not quite sure what that was. Not sure if I want to know what that was. And I think that's the point at which I would call that one. It might still have a couple more days of life if you're desperate, but I think it's just about finished. Just to finish up the experiment though, here's day number 27, followed by day 28, a snowy day number 29, and finally, here's where they ended up on day 30, after a full month of sitting outside, being treated daily with their various preparations. So where does that leave us? Well, I have to once again clarify that this isn't the most scientific of experiments. Each experimental category had only a sample size of one, so I wasn't able to account for potential differences between individual pumpkins that might have affected the results. Though I did try to pick ones that were approximately the same size, as close as I could find, and I did place them on the same porch, so the conditions were as similar as I could make them for my experiment. When we look at the results, we notice number four failed first, and that was the one that had a hole cut out the back instead of the top of the pumpkin. Similarly, number six, which received the mixture of all of the treatments, including that hole in the back, failed third. So I'm pretty confident that this is not a great method of preserving a pumpkin. While it may be true, as the theory went, that leaving the stem intact could help supply some additional nutrients to help support the pumpkin, the structural damage that the hole in the back causes seems to more than negate any such benefit. However, number seven was the control pumpkin that received no treatment, and it failed second. Not only did it seem to be a target for scavengers, but it also seemed to simply decay fairly quickly. So that means all of the methods, other than that hole in the back, seem, at least by this experiment, to offer some benefit. That's actually really encouraging because it means whatever method you like is likely to buy you at least a few extra days of life for your jack-o'-lantern. Number two was the next to fail, and that one was the soap, the peppermint soap. I honestly kind of expected that. The soap did help, but it is just soap, so I was surprised it did as well as it did. One thing worth noting, though, is that once it got to the point I was ready to call it failed, it actually didn't seem to decay much further very quickly, so that might count for something in its favor. It may not last the longest in its sort of original state, but once it hits a certain threshold, it seemed to sort of level off and stop decaying as rapidly as it did at the beginning. Numbers 1 and 5 were almost a tie. 
Number one was the bleach, and number five was the commercially available spray. I called number one just a smidge before number five, arguing that it failed either a smidge faster or a smidge worse than number five did, but that was mostly just because I had to pick an order in which to write out my results rather than accounting for a tie. They were really neck and neck through the whole thing, so that one probably comes down to a personal preference. The bleach is probably a bit cheaper, but also a bit harsher, while the commercially available pumpkin preservative is probably a bit less nasty, but also a bit more expensive. But the real surprise for me was that plain old petroleum jelly was the clear winner of the bunch. In hindsight, I guess it makes sense. By sealing the cut surfaces against potential microbes, you can slow decay quite a bit. However, I have to admit that's also the hardest one to apply since you can't just use a spray bottle. So that method is one for those of you willing to put in a bit more work. I'd also say that though I did reapply it every day at the same time as I reapplied all of the treatments, I noticed that there was still plenty of the petroleum jelly on the surface, and so that means you could easily skip several days of applications without, I think, significantly affecting your results. But all in all, despite the inherent weaknesses in my methodology here, owing to the fact that I'm one guy and don't have all that much funding for research, I'm really happy with this experiment. It shows that with just a bit of extra effort, you can indeed extend the life of a carved pumpkin from just a few days all the way to nearly a month in some cases. Be aware, though, that the intricacy of your design will also affect the pumpkin's lifespan. Though it wasn't part of my experiment, I was also treating my Art the Clown pumpkin with several of these methods, but because it had so many intricate, detailed cuts, it didn't last nearly as long as the ones we've been talking about with their simple little jack-o'-lantern faces. Well, that brings us to the end of our experiment. I hope it helps you figure out how to get the most out of your pumpkins. And as we continue to enjoy our spooky season, do be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you can see some of my other horror and Halloween-themed videos. While you're at it, Click the like button, leave me a comment, and share all of my stuff with a friend. Don't forget to check out all the stuff I've written down in the What's It, where you can find some great links, further information, or buy my book. All of those things help support my work here on this channel. But most importantly, enjoy your Halloween season, go carve some pumpkins, and as always, take care and stay scared.